so that we can also dig through. But I want to push you forward to another subject of discussion that is in the National Assembly, the NADCO report. What happens to the fact that this is before Parliament and already the IEBC, one of the fundamental reasons why this committee was constituted, seems to be going ahead with the exercise of recruitment. What's going to happen, Wakili? What's going to happen, especially, is Parliament going to be debate something in a counterproductive manner, yet they know, regardless of what we hold here, this is going to go forward. Thank you. Uh, you know, just so that you understand, sometimes I think uh, the public needs to sympathize with us in Parliament. In the space of only four or five days, we have very heavy stuff coming. We've had the affordable housing bill. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, the NADCO report was introduced. The NADCO report is a heavy report. Uh, okay, before I go there, the affordable housing <laughs> bill, in terms of public participation alone, it came to about 198 pages. Without the recommendations or the amendments that I was now talking about, mm -hmm. and it just came bang like that. The NADCO report is just about 300 pages. Okay, it was introduced yesterday. Um, it is dated 25th of November last year, and one of the things I observed is I was not quite sure why it wasn't introduced earlier, but that's what uh, under the bridge. It was introduced yesterday. The debate on it is continuing. Uh, I've already made my contribution. I've made my observations, and I will make a few observations, then I come to your questions. One, in my contribution, I supported the NADCO report. And I observed, uh, just like our party leader had observed earlier, that it may not be perfect, but it's work in progress worth or worthy of support. Because in the nature of any negotiated document, it will never be completely perfect. There will always be push and pull, just like even our constitution. But if it serves a greater purpose than what uh, it destroys, then it's worthy of support. I think it's a document that would enable us to move forward some steps. Okay. Uh, having sat in the first um, you know, negotiation team, we were unable to move purely out of lack of goodwill, in my opinion. Uh, at that time, the positions appeared much harder than they were subsequently. And I think that was because, first, the circumstances were such that we were in the middle of our protests, you know, Secondly, there were utterances from the government side that were hardline and all that. So that our three preliminary points that we had wanted discussed, our opposite number said they would not touch. One was cost of living, two was audit of the previous uh, results, and three was uh, an exa you know, a discussion on the mode of selection of the new IBC commissioners. In this report, they have touched on two. It means they conceded on two. They were able to agree on the audit of the uh, you know, results. Yeah. They were able to agree on the constitution of IBC. It is on the cost of living that there's not much that was captured. So I think it's a positive report. Secondly, I think it helps us resolve two immediate issues. The first issue arises under Article 89.2 that requires that between 8 and 12 years, the IBC undertakes a review of the boundaries of constituencies. We have already done the 12 years as of end of this month, yeah. because it's 12 years from the first election. Mm -hmm. So we need an agreed solution to a potential constitutional crisis. The report proposes, and I'm in total agreement, that the best way to do it is to postpone that review. We extend that time. Okay. And the report proposes that we extend it to after 2017. I suggested to them uh, yesterday that the constitutional language would be that in, we adjust 8 to 12 and say 10 to 17 or 12 to 17. That resolves that issue. You, you don't give dates in the mm -hmm. constitution. Mm -hmm. yeah? Now, we would have resolved that. The second resolution is in terms of constitution of IBC. Contrary to what many people think, the judgment that was issued by the High Court a fortnight ago is not inconsistent 
with this NADCO report. Okay. The judge said that it would have been preferable to have a political solution because these are political uh, questions under the political questions doctrine. But because it has taken so much time and there are people who are going without representation, then the court is compelled to go with the law as it is now, which is to direct that team to finalize within 90 days. This report itself recommends an amendment to the act so that it changes the composition okay. of the membership of the selection panel. But it also recommends that they then finish their work within 90 days. It is possible to make the 90 days of the court and the 90 days of the report commensurate, okay. you know, within the 90 days. Mm -hmm. Because all it takes, if we can enact an entirely new legislation called the Affordable Housing Act in, in, four days. in three days, mm -hmm. amending one sentence from seven to nine cannot take us 30 Half minutes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very easy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, I think that it importantly captures the, the need to audit the 2022 elections. Not about some, what some people fear that uh, we are now going to find out somebody won, somebody didn't win, and then what are the consequences. It is to comply with the law. Article 81.2 of the Constitution requires that every election must be transparent, it must be efficient, it must be accountable. That means no matter the outcome, anytime any Kenyan demands of IBC that I want to know how it satisfies this article, they ought to be able to demonstrate yeah. without saying go to court. So this then brings confidence in elections, not just presidential, but elections all the way down and in subsequent elections. Now, as I observed yesterday, it is true that there are areas where we will need to do some very careful navigation. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, one of those areas, for example, and I mentioned, is the question of leader of opposition and the chief, um, it's called what, the chief, um, the prime cabinet secretary. Because the report recognizes those offices, but doesn't go to the detail, the great detail of the implications. The implications, we must agree whether we are maintaining a presidential system with those offices and agree where then they fall or we want to change to a parliamentary system and agree whether then the office is in parliament or we want to create a hybrid at this point but those are conversations we'll have later the other conversation we'll have later is insofar as the their recommendation to stagger the elections the general elections okay. you know we must have very hard discussions around that but overall i think the report is worthy of support. Okay. It has very many good proposals. The few areas that require careful navigation are actually annexed us to the report, which constitute legislative proposals. And those ones can be discussed separately, okay. including the questions of referendum and all that. So as it sits in parliament, now all lies in parliament, it's proper? According it to is you. proper in parliament. My regret is that it was it delayed in coming to parliament. It should have come sooner. Mm -hmm. It's taken almost four months. Um, for me, it should have come sooner. We should have passed it sooner. By now, the legislative and constitutional amendment measures that we were to take, we should have taken most of them. Okay. But all, not is, all, all is not lost. We can still fast track some of them. But what, what stopped parliament from, because parliament nowadays controls its own calendar. So if you say it's a regret and yet parliament had to go and recess, I mean, control your own calendar. If it was as important and fundamental as you say today, could in parliament determine that using the calendar? The I wish calendar? I could answer that because that is the same question I'm asking. Yeah. This is a fundamental document. Why was it not introduced earlier? Well, and, that is why, and that is why mm -hmm. I spoke to Goodwill. Okay. That report, for it to be implemented, must take goodwill okay. of everyone and honesty. Okay. Without goodwill, we will go nowhere with if, it. Would you say as it is, it's okay? As it is, yeah. I said Without it is... Without that one issue that is, is not agreed It is upon. work in progress, yeah. worthy of support. Okay. But there are conversations we must have subsequent to adopting it. Okay. There's so much trade